Shevsky here. That sounds like a doorbell. Down, down, down. Shevsky here. I gotta have that in my house. That'd be actually <laughs> probably annoy my whole family. Shevsky here, and welcome to Fantasy House. It's imaginary MTV cribs. Basically, think you're in a, com- a cartoon universe. And you can be as silly and funny and imaginative as you want and just come up with the trippiest fantasy house ever. Every week I have a different real human being. Not just entertainers, not just comedians, not just professional athletes or doctors that have cured diseases. No, I have real human beings on this show that are contributing to society in so many different ways. This week, uh, a longtime friend. This is a special episode because this is a longtime friend that I've known for decades. This dude has always been... always. He's sitting here right now as I read this intro, so it's very awkward not to make eye contact with him. He's always been in my corner, always been supportive, always just been a freaking great dude. Of po- I don't know. Your kids are lucky because you're a positive, uh, supportive, loving human being. And he flew out from Colorado to do this episode. And I'm not lying, folks. He didn't have like a dentist appointment. He didn't have business he had to do out here. He actually flew out here to record this episode of Fantasy House, and I am motherfucking honored to have him as a guest today. Guys, you know this. You know what this podcast is brought to you by? It's brought to you by me, John Shevsky, the only realtor in Southern California. Look it up. Google it. Actually, don't Google it. Anyways, I would love to be of service. If you're thinking about buying or selling or you have any questions, if you want to learn about like multifamily investment properties, anything like that, hit me up, fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com, or you can just go to my Instagram, which is just John Shevsky, Instagram, J-O-N-S-H-E-F-S-K-Y. You can call me from there. You can email me from there. You can see what's up. My good friend, Nick the Plumber, also known officially... By his Christian name, Nick Ganzook is here today. I can't wait to hear about his fantasy house. Guys, stick around. Here it comes. In the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do this. I hung out in tattoo parlors as a youngin, yeah. and um, I met you in a tattoo parlor. And I walked in and saw this pa- this painting. It was like a ten by ten of like a toilet bowl with like a piece of shit in it. <laughs> and I walked in and Dude, said, I about that." And I said, "Who are ta- it's you a know, Loch Ness monster? Right? Totally. It's the one with the turd that's coming out Dude, of the water, and it says Loch Ness monster." Totally. And uh, the owner, totally the owner of your parlor was a BFF of mine at the time, and I said, "Who painted that?" And he said, "Oh, you got to meet my buddy John." And that was the rest was history. I was oh, just a fan yeah. of all your art and anything you do since that day. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel the same way about you as your art being that you're a stellar dude, and uh, you've always been. I'm sure you just know from your, your life and your other experience. You've always been a, a, a smiling face, a friendly like you're. You're a very positive person to be around. Oh, cool! Thank you. I appreciate like, that. To spread that joy in the world, it's always. I think for those of us that aren't that or want to be that, when we when we encounter someone like that, we're like, man, I want to make people feel good when they they just see me. You right. know what I mean? And like you you do that. Or like Thank Nick you. the Plumber's here. Like it was always exciting. It totally. News in the shop. Like, oh, Nick the Plumber's stopping by later. Like, oh, oh yeah, fuck yeah, he's coming. Even if it's for like two minutes, it totally. brightens your day just for you to be like, hey, what's up? And oh, you're like, that's cool What's to know that. up, dude? Yeah, thank awesome. you for doing that. Yeah, no problem. Seriously, it makes thank a difference you. in people's lives. Cool, I appreciate that. So Thanks. we knew each other in the in the tattoo world when I was in the tattoo shop. Um, we did, and I remember you starting out in the comedy thing, and I know that I went to your first your first couple shows. Like, I'm sorry, let me apologize on air for that one. <laughs> <laughs> you had some pretty good stuff, though. I remember a bit about a walrus vagina. Do you remember that bit? Yep, 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 yep. And all the times you apologized yep. to your grandma. Oh, dude, in the audience. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Oh, dude, I was a dirty, filthy little new comic, and I just, I just wanted to be like Dave Chappelle and Robert Schimmel. I wanted to make up like silly, fake sexual stories. Totally. It was, it was so awesome. bad. It was awesome. Uh, now I have to explain it to the audience, to the listeners. Guys, uh, I had a joke about, like, and it was fully made up, and it was basically uh, about me going to SeaWorld and 
falling over the glass while looking at a walrus and going face first into a walrus's crotch. It was <laughs> such a bad joke, but it was it was fun though. It was when fun. I think about it, it was fun. Oh, dude, it was kind of fun. It totally. And then and then uh, years later, you you you've been you moved to to the Rado. I did. Do we call to... it that? Is that the cool? <laughs> I always said Colorado until I moved there, and it's Colorado. Yeah. But they call themselves Coloradans, which I think... Do they use like the hang loose symbol underneath it and they put it in bright neon don't. letters? Colorado. It's, fairly con- it's fairly conservative. Is it really in Colorado? Except for Boulder. Boulder's very Boulder's very the Austin liberal. of Colorado? Topless County, yeah. Okay, that's where Topless I gotta go. That's where I feel comfortable. Right, oh, right? Totally. yeah, like, totally. like like half redneck, Street. half Street. hippie. That's where I'm like. That's where Big I'm most time. comfortable. Totally. If you miss either of those sides of it, I'm just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, right. if yeah. it's too hippie and not enough redneck, not I'm enough like, redneck. you guys are missing a huge part of life. It's got to be right in between. And if it's too redneck, right? You're like, right you gotta between. add some hippie to that. Right in between. Right. Right in between. So you moved out there. You've been plumbing. Is that a term for plumbing? Plum plumbing with no G. Plumbing. You just been plumbing. Plumbing. With, yeah, with like an apostrophe, no G at the end. That's it. Plumbing. You, you've been plumbing for how long? Um, 23 years. What got you into that? 23. Oh, I wasn't much of a college kid. And my stepdad, um, said, Hey, pick up a trade. And so I got a job in construction. Um, and I did windows first, but that's not. I mean, Nick the window guy kind of sucks. <laughs> doesn't have the same rhyme. Moniker. Yeah, and Nick the plumber sounded <laughs> way better. Chose your full career director, director out of syllables. You're yeah. like, too many syllables, not too doing that. Syllables. It didn't sound cool <laughs> enough. Um, you make plumbing seem cool where you're like, dude, right. like people don't respect trades a lot, especially like, you know, like the, the young, the hip, like it was always in school. I remember them being like, you don't want to end up like with a wrench. And then like, as I get older, I was like the coolest people I know have like wrenches and tools. Totally. And I, th- I think it was the cable guy that had that one line like, yeah, he treated me like snot, like I'm a goddamn plumber or something. <laughs> and I always took it, that into the fence. In Jim Carrey's <laughs> Yeah, Jim Carrey, yeah. yeah. It's like, wait, what? And you're like watching like, hey, that, that hit a little close to home there, buddy. Yeah, like, what? Yeah, I've always enjoyed I've, – I've enjoyed working with my hands. Um, and like we were talking about earlier, just helping people really is what it comes down to. It's really providing a service that, that is an absolute necessity. It feels good, right? It feels great. It feels fantastic. At the end of my day, you know, I hang my hat with a smile knowing that I helped – multiple people during that day. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's so great. I, they always say – you and I were joking about this earlier uh, – like when you're depressed or you're feeling down, they're, they're like one of the best tips I ever heard that helped me out was like, it's because you're thinking about your, you're being narcissistic or something like that. Mm-hmm. So stop thinking about yourself and just go like ask someone if you can help them do something. So yeah. if you're depressed, like find an old lady crossing the road, see someone like uh, see see a dude that's uh, you know on crutches and yeah. help him get into his car. Like go to the grocery store, ask someone if you can carry, just ask someone if you can help them. Right. Oh yeah. And it's like, that is a good, a good immediate fix that can like literally get you out of something really quick yeah. uh, of depression yeah. just to feel of service. But like a long term solution is like find jobs or purpose that really make you feel of service. Yeah. And like, and like to literally make a career out of serving people is very fulfilling. It, it's been fulfilling as a lifestyle for me. You know, I, I really do. Um, I appreciate all the people that helped me along the way and that allowed me to develop, you know, a knowledge and a certain skill set that has allowed me to just help people day in and day out. Totally. Yeah. Did you ever have anything like wild happen though? Like when you're like, uh, like a younger plumber and you're a like, dude, younger plumber, <laughs> younger plumber stories. All, yeah. I got, all com. Crazy, I got all kinds of crazy <laughs> stories, which, you know, hopefully, um, Hopefully it makes this episode kind of fun too, like seeing all kinds of crazy houses and big, you know, working for rich and famous people. And oh, so you've been really inspired like in person, like, in like per- oh, oh yeah. I got to get me one of these. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, listening to previous episodes and people that are like, oh, I have, I, I want this in my house. And I've seen stuff like that in people's houses, like motion lights that follow you through rooms and turn off when you walk out. Like people with lots of money have lots of all kinds of fun stuff. I've told a couple of guests where I'm like, you know, you think you made that up out of thin air? There's rooms with mattresses for floors. I totally, like, yeah, totally. They're like, oh yeah, dude. I've seen some crazy stuff out there. Yeah. Or like the windows uh, that, that can just go black, black out by a touch of a button. It's like, yeah. those exist. Oh yeah. And like, yeah, it's, it's exciting, right? You're like, oh It you is, can, yeah. It's cool. I've that? seen some really cool stuff. I've I've had some some uh, a lot of fun times. I've had some really weird things happen too. And I've, well, I've tell seen us one. Stuff. I got to hear one. I know our listeners want to hear one weird thing. Oh, 
I was in the house for. <laughs> <laughs> it all started in the about, house. Yeah. It was actually on a private island outside of Newport. Um, really, really wealthy. Um, I think she was like the heiress to the GM fortune or something. Yeah, um, one of those crazy fun, fun things to find yourself in. Yeah, and so like people, like like true servants in her house. Like everyone was in uniform. You know, like an olive green uniform Like staff. a full staff was an employee? Yeah, and the weirdest part about the whole thing was a guy followed me. I worked there for four hours, and he followed me with a, with a cloth, and he wiped everything I touched. Oh, All the wow. doorknobs, if I leaned against the wall, he'd come up and wipe it as soon as I moved. <laughs> Weird. For four hours, and after... That's not healthy. That's when money makes you not healthy. You're no. Like, That's not healthy. And I don't maybe she was a germaphobe or something, but maybe. it was one of the weirdest <laughs> situations I had ever been in. Yeah. I, after about two hours, told the guy, like, hey, if you want to just clean when I'm done done you know what i mean that would make me a little just more clean everything in here Let's he never said he never said a word to me he just stared at me he wasn't just, allowed to even talk. and he just kept wiping stuff everything i touched he wiped was it the norm floor. mcdonald in that one movie uh <laughs> was it was it dirty work no it's not dirty work dirty there's work. dirty work and there's uh, what's the one with dan devito norm mcdonald dave Chappelle? uh it's not dirty work. They, they came out around the same time, and they're both brilliant movies. Anyways, Norm McDonald plays a servant, and it's really funny. The lady he works for, and, and I just uh, just uh, just obscene. Oh, just tasks. trips. Yeah, where you're like, you have like too much money, and then you have too much time to like be, get weirder. Like you and I, we're regular people. <laughs> we're totally like we can't afford to get that weird. We can't afford. To you know what I mean? That's yeah. why celebrities always end up all weird. You're like, why is Jim Carrey so trippy? It's like because he can be as trippy as he wants, and he never loses the top part of his uh, what is it the the hierarchy of needs. Oh, like yeah. I always have shelter, food, health care, a car. Not that, not that he's bad or anything. I'm just saying, yeah. like, you, you can't afford to be so weird in your – like, if you're the weirdest plumber out there, people will be like, don't hire that guy. He's the weirdest don't plumber. But if you're like, I weird. own Ford cars, people are going to be like, he owns Ford cars and he insists he that we roll cooked corn out in front of him everywhere he walks. And it's just like, that's just how it is. He needs to walk on cooked <laughs> he corn. He walks on corn cobs. We, yeah, he rolls, he like rolls on corn cobs. <laughs> he's a real assembly line guy like his great, great grandpapa. And totally. he, he, we just do it because that's how it is. <laughs> But you and I can't do that, right? No, like, it's like we'd be totally. I don't totally sit on couches. Weird. I sit in Jello bowls. People be like, "No, <laughs> no, we're not doing that for you. We'll find someone else to do our podcast and to be our realtor." So yeah, okay. So that money lets her have someone wiping up after you. God only knows what else is going on in that house. I can't imagine what they do behind her. I don't know. I mean, She's I'm like, just I haven't seen my guy. husband. He's just been murdering hookers on an island with the Epstein's or whatever. <laughs> right? You're like, You're and I just want to make sure there's no germs on any of my handles. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely out there. Oh, it was dude, a weird, a weird deal. Did you have, have anything, uh, anything like gnarly happen that, that was uh, in a good way? Where you're like, "Whoa, they gave me a free helicopter just for coming oh. in here. I got a helicopter." Um, I I have acquired some cool stuff, TVs and such. People are like, "Oh, hey, I bought a new TV." My husband said, "You know, this one wasn't working, but I think he was just lying to get a new TV." But I, I have nowhere to take. You know, can you take that? And then all of a sudden, I had a seventy-inch flat just screen to, for the garage, just to hurry up and get it out of their way. Nothing wrong with that's it. how I yeah. got my Herman Miller uh, office chair. Oh, that's cool. They're just like it's broken. I was it's like, it is, and then really? I was like, I bought a twenty-dollar bolt Herman and Miller office chair. T- totally. Yeah. So you yeah. got a seventy-inch TV. It's totally. I got a bar. Like I, I got a. I found a bar once, like a whole bar, like this old. 70s yellow vinyl bar and that was the bar in my home bar oh that, wow that we called manville forever i mean it was there for like 10 years i mean yeah. i served hundreds of drinks over that thing what's the scoop now so now you're out you're out in the, the rado as, I, we, as I, we say as us locals say welcome to rado welcome to rado yeah i've returned full circle so i retired i actually retired from plumbing like eight or nine years ago um and went into executive management um, but then kind of return full circle to lead a less stress. We stressful say full life. flush in this industry. Sorry, f- return full flush. Full flush. That's full right. Full flush. Uh, back into a hands on trade job again. So now I'm back plumbing, specializing in sewer service. It's, a, it's so low stress. It's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot healthier for me. I, it, I mean, it, it makes me happy that you're healthier mentally and just happier and to see that you can still be of service to society, oh, yeah. make a good living and not yep. be pulling your hair out, being stressed out. is like, <laughs> right. man, right. this is like a, this is like a really long advertisement for Colorado. For like, Colorado. <laughs> yeah. It's great. <laughs> Local Coloradans will be like all mad that you did this episode. They'll be like, totally. there's like eight more cars on our street this yeah. year. It's here because more of your Cal- damn podcast. More, more damn Californians. <laughs> yeah. Stop coming here. I get emails from Colorado realtors. They're like, thanks for the referral, for the referral. man. <laughs> We're really, totally. a lot of Californians migrated over. Right. Uh, no, that's great, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm stoked for you and the family. Well, thank you. I appreciate that's that. It's beautiful. So since you live in a heavenly Colorado, I, uh, how are you going to even come up with something even better than that for a fantasy house? 
it's going to be a mix between the two. Okay. Um, demographically, we'll definitely have some rock and roll SoCal roots. Nice. Um, sprinkled in with some of what I'm doing now, which is farmhouse stuff. I bought a farm. I moved out there and bought the farm. You bought a farm. I bought a farm, yeah. What does it entail to own a farm? A lot of work. I guess people don't realize how much work it is. Like, I'm, I you know, I work all week and then have the weekends off. But I literally could wake up with the sun on Saturday walk outside and have something to do until the sun goes down whether it's yard work or like mending finches air quotes you know what i mean or is it stuff where you could get your kids to help like do you have cowboy hats for everybody we have boots and hats and yeah no we like a lot of snow clothes because you still got to do a bunch of stuff in the snow which is fun okay where's your where's your uh location on the floor of the fabulous forum the forum the forum (laughs) in la in la yeah (laughs) Your fantasy house is on the floor my, of the forum? On the floor oh of the forum. Oh, my God. This is already LA. getting good. Okay. So, what does it look like if we walk into the forum? Packed house. In fact, <laughs> not, o- not only is it a pa- every seat sold out. God, you're lonely out there in Colorado, totally. huh? You're like, my fantasy? Yeah, is that everybody's fantasy. watching everybody me, my watch- wife and kids at all times? Dude, yes. So, And you actually have to buy tickets to get in. So for this podcast, we'll just pretend that you won – Backstage passes on your local radio station to get in to what, my home. What's the local station? Whatever. I don't know. You're K- listening to whatever. I don't <laughs> whatever. know. FM. K- what, what's future? KLOS. KLOS, KLOS the yeah. rock station. Right? Pirate radio. Pirate radio. Yeah, it's been around for a few years. Right. Jack FM. Yes. Yeah, so you called in. You were caller 69 and got yourself some backstage passes. Hell some lammies. Yeah. Dude. Super teenager style too. Totally. I was caller 69. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I got the tickets too, boo. T- totally, totally. Super stoked. So not only is my farmhouse on the floor of the forum, the forum yeah. is in dead center of the Mall of America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With we, the roller coaster going around? Everything, everything? Totally. It includes every amenity plus restaurants and shopping. Wetzel's Pretzel, Stussy and Pacific Sun, roller coasters. Ooh. Comedy clubs. Comedy clubs. Is there a comedy club? There's a comedy club. Go-karts. There's a movie theater. I love it. There's everything you need. Okay. So I could get a huge fan base in the forum, which makes me feel good. People cheering. What would they Um, be cheering? Would they be like, Dick well, that's the a, plumber. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, we'll just pretend there's producers that watch me. So they don't actually watch what goes inside my house, but producers do. So there's like a, an applause light and like a like a like a laugh light so when i tell a funny joke or a quick <laughs> zing someone clicks it and the whole audience goes nuts so i feel good about it so you have producers watching what is going on so you've allowed, totally. you've allowed a small group of elite people to see what's going on in there totally. watching you in the shower cracking a fart out totally. and then they and then, hit the applause button and the crowd so you, goes wild so you get so the crowd's a hired crowd to, totally. to their what do you call it, paid audience yep. but you get the joy of like i'm killing it right now totally. that is hilarious and genius in a very interesting psychological way it's fulfilling it's very it very just cool. makes me feel awesome it makes everyone at my house feel awesome too so when you're there and you crack some jokes they're just like clap track and forty thousand people go nuts and i'm just like yeah <laughs> dude killing like we're this at dinner room. And I'm, totally. i just did like a stupid dad joke like, this dinner is this dinner or liner it's like lunchtime in here am i right and then i'm just like oh my god that's but the crowd got, going wild. But you and your family are just looking at me deadpan at your table, totally. but I'm like, I'm killing. I don't know what's the matter with yeah. you people. I'm, My kids are like, what? what did you yeah. say? <sighs> Dad, this guy sucks. <laughs> and totally. I'm just like, shut up, you little bitch. And I tell the security to take him out. <laughs> totally. You're a heckler. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, so the house is is like an off-white buttery cream farmhouse. It okay. essentially is my house now, which is my true life dream house. Um you know, big black roof, like oversized, like not so it looks like a, a mushroom. BBR. Yeah, not so it looks like a mushroom. Roof. <laughs> it's oh. like your kind of flick. BBR. That's right. right. It has like deep fascia, so like over accentuated fascia. <laughs> oh, man. Um, it's, at the same time, it's very plain. It's just a straight, the themes like boho, like bohemian farmhouse. Mixed with some wood siding, simple, ye- not not getting too crazy. Anymore. Not getting too crazy. Okay. To- totally simple. Um, Aside the fact that it's inside the, the it's, forum, but it's, <laughs> that it's inside the fabulous but, forum that's inside yeah. the Mall of America <laughs> yeah, with a hired uh, ten thousand person crowd, <laughs> twenty four hours a day, built in laugh track. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's got some mid century modern sprinkled in as far as furniture. Um, 
like with a southwestern motif, but not pastel. Does that make sense? Sure. Like rich navies, mustard. Rich navies. Rich navies, mustard. Like the successful countries of the world. <laughs> rich navies. <laughs> rich <yes>. navies. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I just. Deserve- <laughs> is this a shit country or one of the successful countries? How Success- rich is your navy? A rich navy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like someone's request. Like, let's buy that country. They have a rich they have navy. A rich navy. <laughs> <laughs> the women are hot, and the navy is rich. I will own the whole country. Well, you can you can own my throw pillows. <laughs> the rich name, rich name. <laughs> um, lots of marugandy, which is what's marugandy? It's a you're schooling me. A dog. mix between maroon and burgundy. Which marugandy. Is, you mean burgundy? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a rich. It's a rich burgundy. If if you're listening to this right now and you Google marugandy, you'll see something. Will they see something? I have no idea. I've never Did you just Googled make it, it up, or is that a yeah. real term? I made it up. You made I, it up. Well, I, I can't take the... I'm sure somebody else made it up, but I'm making it up right, right now. now. Right totally. now. Marugandy. Somebody else hasn't made it up on Fantasy House, so it's never happened. That's, cool. That's how I determine things in my life. It's a new Fantasy House color. The Marugandy. Marugandy. Um, white oak floors, light. What, you know, everything white inside, just white. Just bright. Just all white. Um, Why do you like it all white? Is it? Is it? I've always been drawn to all white because then art stands out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then art. Anything with color just pops. Pops. Huge impact when you walk into a house. It's just everything's stark white and everything's just about um, pieces of furniture that are even like art, you know, certain different chairs and stuff. Um, Do you ever worry like when it's all white that it's just going to get dirty all the time? Because like the day, every time I wear a white shirt is like when I get a flat tire and I end up I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> grease stains. Dude, I get a grease stain. And I'm like, I haven't touched anything with grease on it for six months. And then the day I wear a white shirt, grease stains. Grease stains. Um... Not necessarily, but I mean, I can always just paint over it. Yeah, no, it's your fancy I mean, house. You can it's have my, a, yeah, you can have nanobots that paint to, over stuff as they get dirty. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but in real life, like even getting white dirty, you just paint right over it. I mean, because I got two kids and they're fairly crazy. I mean, they're they're really great kids, but every once in a while, something gets thrown at the wall. Oh, of course, I'm repainting. And you just dunk them in white paint. Totally. Or oh, the walls. <laughs> the walls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you dunk your kids dunk in white my paint, kids. that's another weird uh, thing. You're like, oh yeah, dude, it keeps them clean. <laughs> totally. <laughs> keeps them clean. <laughs> We're super white over here in Colorado. Right. Like, your friends are really white, and you're like, yeah, yeah. No, they're also from, they're mostly Dutch. We're like, they're no, Dutch. no, they're covered in white paint. <laughs> like, yeah, no, they're they're white. <laughs> I was just listening to the David Lee Roth podcast, and he was talking about getting fired from a Vegas casino for cracking a joke about Edgar Winters, who's an albino. Yeah. And on stage, he told him to lighten up, and they totally <laughs> fired him. They fired David Lee Roth? They fired David Lee Roth. Oh, Edgar totally, Winters has more power than totally, David Lee Roth? DLR, yeah, he got fired for cracking that joke. <laughs> that's hey, hilarious. lighten up. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I actually told, I actually did comedy at a place once where the guy was out, one of the guys that the, the bartender was albino. He's a super nice dude, but like something happened and he laughed at something. I was like, even the guy that got struck by lightning's laughing. And then like I felt really. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just riffing. Like I didn't mean anything. Totally. But you know, uh, I was definitely fired from that gig as well. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so me and David Lee Roth. You and David Lee Roth. We got fired a lot for albino of things in common. We got to go to celebrity rehab. Totally. A customer of mine, by the way, David Lee Roth. Oh, really? Yeah, here in Pasadena. Is he the one that uh, that uh, gave you the free? Uh, no, the free uh, TV screen. No, in fact, you can't bring. Yeah, no, I never got anything from him other than revenue. But you can't bring like phones on, like you deal with management. You can't bring. You can't take pictures on his property or any of that because they're they're just like it's private. Like it totally. I feel like if they if they private. have to be like that though, because if he didn't, like it would open the floodgates of people abusing. Right? Yeah, and of all the of all the famous people, he's probably the coolest. So I've been in a lot of wealthy homes. Yeah, you know, and and usually really everybody really, shits totally. Just if you're listening really, right now, you're like everybody. famous people have plumbers. Totally. Oh yeah, we're all oh, yeah. pissing and shitting and totally. washing our hands and yeah, and, and <laughs> we like, need sewage. You know, the wealthiest homes I've ever worked in are not famous people. Um, a lot of famous people are so so wealthy, but yeah. but like the funnest by far. So like his. I don't even know if I should say this, but like his private life is super private, but super awesome. Yeah. Like literally still has every jumpsuit he's ever worn on racks in his living room. Oh, wow. It's in amazing. his living room? In his living room. It's racks like the Hard Rock of, Cafe dude, when you walk into his living room? Totally. Racks <laughs> of boas. And all around the property is like sprinkled with shit from his videos. Like oh, in awesome. the Van Halen days. Like, oh, yeah. Like all the like the outfit and climbing shoes and stuff from like some of the skyscraper days. Yeah. And like just like Paradise, that surfboard's like propped He's, he up in his He celebrates his whole journey at, at totally. David B. Roth. And I would too. I mean, dude. I would. I mean, I would just. 
relish in that. Is he just he chilling? Awesome. Is he just retired nowadays, or like what's he, what's he doing? Um, now he tour. He still tours. I mean, because he pops in and out of the property. I mean, you oh. really just deal with staff. Like yeah. when you're that big, you know, I always just dealt with staff, and he'd pop out and say, "What's up?" That'd be so cool. Totally. Man, okay. Yeah, cool um, I was so, trying to think of a pun for uh, for Van Halen and, and and plumbing and fantasy houses, and I couldn't put it all three together. That's okay, right? Uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's like you kind of you try to come up with a pun for David Lee Roth, and and you realize you're not the only one because everybody wants uh, everybody wants them. Everybody. Um, wants them. <laughs> Good one, dude. Well, if I was in your fantasy house, I'd have a full fucking applause of ten thousand people in my. Ah, everybody wants some. Wants some riffs. That's me applauding. I, you did a applause. good job. Thanks. I felt real. And we're sitting, we're sitting in Kamel's house while I'm looking at a deer that Kamel's dad shot, just <laughs> sitting on the wall. And I was like, he's kind of got a, he's kind of smiling. He's smirking at me. He likes that. He, is. he thought it was funny. He totally thought it was right. Funny. Yeah, that's a great bust. I'm hot for Shevsky. <laughs> if that deer started singing, totally. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'll listen to every single episode of Fantasy House. I'd like to get off of this wall, but I'm on a mount. I got it bad, got it bad, got it bad. I'm a stuffed deer that's hot for Shevsky. I will make love to that deer right now if it makes this episode kick ass. It's a good, it's a good looking deer. <laughs> All right. So, what, what? So, so, okay, back to, back to my farmhouse. Uh, I have a huge, exaggerated welcome mat that's like the size of a sheet of plywood if you're seeing those really big ones um and it has like my favorite hobo glyph do you know what hobo glyphs are no hobo glyphs are like um turn of the century markings that hobos like in their lifestyle would mark paths to people's property to identify who lived there to other hobos that only hobos knew what they stood for so they could see it and go oh hey there's a kind old lady here you know tell her a a pity story you know, or like, hey, don't go here. They got vicious dogs. So they have this whole. That was like their sales. Uh, what do you call it? Their. It was like. War- it was like. Someone- yeah, it was like warning signs for other hobos. Like, don't go there. That guy will shoot you if you're on his property. Totally. That exactly. Lady, if you give her a sob story, we'll give you a free well, drink and some exactly. food. Exactly. Like, hey, there's shelter here. They have an open barn. You can sleep in the hay. Like, no questions asked. Wow. Just go sleep there. So there was one that's my favorite that is like so plain and so basic. It's just two lines and it literally stands for sky's the limit at this property. So that's my welcome mat. Just those two lines that stand for the (laughs) sky's the limit. That's rad. Totally. And it's crazy because they have hoboglyphs now Mm -hmm. currently, but they're like all branded. Like they're not the same as the ones that like burning man. It's all corporate. now. It's so corporate. Like, mcdonald's m's you know what i mean like and and it's weird i tried to i looked some of them up recently and they were like all about like where you can go get recycled like fryer oil i'm like why would a hobo yeah. need recycled fryer hobos oil? don't have so the weird. diesel mercedes running on like french fry oil it's, it's not it's not as enticing or, or uh, attractive as like the historic hundred year old hobo glyphs like they really are it's like a whole language that's you pretty know, badass that you even hobo. know that yeah, I know some weird shit, man. Did you mm-hmm. ever travel by train? Um, I have traveled by train, yeah, a lot. Actually, throughout the state of California as a late teen. That's what, that was my method of transportation because it was fun. Like illegally running, getting on trains and going? No, I bought tickets. Okay. Uh, I got I bought tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you I mean like, like a hobo? I almost thought you'd be a hobo for a second. And I like was a like, hobo? I was like, you were a hobo? He's like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, I bought tickets. Yeah, no, I bought, t- I bought tickets. <laughs> I was like, moonshine, <laughs> murder, that kind of murder. weird stuff. Uh, you know, the bowl cut. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no, 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 no. I was just Amtrak. Bowler hats. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah it was Amtrak. Yeah, that yeah, was cool. Um, so that's your that's your welcome mat. That's my welcome mat. Sky's okay. the limit. So um, when you ring, um, when you ring my doorbell, it is the howling intro from Welcome to the Jungle. It's just Axel, but he's like really standing there. Yeah, yeah, and it's the the opening guitar riff. This is when you ring your doorbell. <laughs> That's when you ring the doorbell. Totally, but they're really there. So they they're actually my greeters. So when you open the door, Axel's just sitting there and he's just howls. <laughs> <laughs> right, Axel. This is Axel's job now. Axel is that he works at your house as a greeter. T- totally, but it's like, <laughs> but it's like eighty-eight Axel, like the teased hair, no shirt, yeah, like leather totally. clad, totally. and uh, so then Slash is there, and um, his job solely is to follow me around my house and just solo 
my events of the day. So I think I've heard guests talk about how they have like mood music. Yeah. Like literally it's just slash soloing. He's like playing my guitar mood. in the background when you're doing stuff. Totally. But since you're here, he's following you around. Oh my God. And he's just going to solo the events of the day throughout my household. Like if I just ask him like, Where, where's the restroom at? Like slash is going to be like. To- <laughs> totally. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, just I'll, literally, just noodling that shit. Th- yes, totally. Okay, cool. Um, so for the <laughs> for the record, my house is super low tech. Like, in fact, it's so low tech, it's no tech. I have no tech. Not a fan. Okay, there's zero tech. So with that being said, um, there's no TVs. You know, you 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 don't watch movies or TV shows. But my house is filled with real actors. In fact, the whole crowd are real famous actors and they just act out their movie parts in my family room. So <laughs> if Al Pacino, just like totally, scene. totally, I totally have Al Pacino. Oh, dude. You guys, Scarface. Yeah, dude. He's just sitting there doing his thing. Like he just acts it out with, and they, and they just act out. Like it's just a huge open forum in my family room. That's hilarious. With lighting and everything. Live theater, live theater, but it's TV shows and it's at request. So then, that whole applauding crowd are all those famous people just waiting to go on next for whatever movie you'd like to watch. Oh, Julianne Moore is like one of the people clapping. Like, when's totally. it my turn to get in there and totally? And when do you re- thirty Rock Live with Alec Baldwin, and when you request it, they come on in and they do their thing. Oh wow, totally. That's uh, that's. Uh- I love how many celebrities you're employed. 40,000. 40, <laughs> Just 40,000 uh, celebrities. But you can't get in without buying tickets. So like they, it pays, pays for all that. It pays for itself, pays basically. For itself. Your house, yeah. it pays for itself. It pays for itself. You can't afford not to have Nick's fantasy house. It's like super in expensive. In this economy? <laughs> it's super expensive cable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so all these people that are in my house like are... It's the therapy bill alone. Right? They're all waiting to perform. So like... I could talk to them if need be or just walk around and then they're like making messes and cleaning shit up and like, you know, they're, they're cooking and like doing dishes. So like we just watched shallow house. So Jack Black's <laughs> in the kitchen making like one big nacho and Gwyneth's in there gooping it up with like a fucking dirt smoothie or whatever. So I could just, <laughs> whatever go- <laughs> the go- goopy goops, smoothie. dude. So I could just walk in the kitchen and eat whatever someone's cooking at any one time. Cause there's always someone in there making food. You know what I mean? Some celebrity shit. You can just munch on stuff. Totally. And clothes too. Everyone wears clothes and gets them dirty, and they do all their own laundry. So I just walk around and wear famous people's clothes. What? Uh, <laughs> just famous people's clothes. Yeah, Whose is this? Uh, I don't know. Hey, it's like two sizes too big. I need a belt. I'll just go find a belt. Whatever. Totally. Let's find a belt. Someone's got a belt, right? Johnny, totally. Johnny Depp's got like thirty of them. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Or I go find some smaller pants. There you I'm go. Like whatever. Johnny Depp also has thirty of those. <laughs> totally. Johnny Depp or Mick Jagger will let you borrow their pants. Totally. <laughs> You want some tiny pantalones? Dude, I never... Tom Cruise is glad his laundry is still getting <laughs> done right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just reach in the dryer. <laughs> his pants are more like shorts for me, though. It's I'm t- t- pretty tall. Tiny little Tom Cruise <laughs> shorts. Tiny little Tom. <laughs> totally. Yeah, but see, I never have to do anything that way. I don't have to clean. I don't have to cook. I don't have to do laundry. Yeah, you just, just mooch off of all of America's uh, heroes. Totally. totally. That's, the best, that's the best part. Um, and at the same time, they're all playing one big game of hot potato. Like throughout your throughout entire, the whole house and there, musical there's chairs. One hot potato for ten thousand people getting totally and musical chairs. If you're in the house, you have to play musical chairs at any one time. I feel like that is a form of technology. Just really zoomed in, <laughs> zoomed in. It's like old school. It's like it is an electron like flying down some form of circuit from a, from a certain perspective. <laughs> right. Um, so we talked about all white wall, everything white. Yep. And that so um, my art stands out. So all the art in my house. Um is live art like the pageant of the masters in Laguna. You ever been to the pageant of the masters and the no, festival of arts? No, in Laguna? But they, they, they joked about it on arrest development, right? Totally. Yeah. They totally, they have a whole episode about yeah. that. Yeah. That's all the art in my house is like people painted as paintings and on display. Phenomenal and trippy. Uh, totally. And so uh, the theme changes. So like monthly it'll change or whatever. And so while you're here, it'll be, um, my, my favorite Art Nouveau, it'll be Art Nouveau themed. So it's um, Alphonse Mucha, oh, I believe all right, is yeah. the correct pronunciation. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think you're probably right. Um, yeah, you know, I, I used to say Cha, but he's not Hispanic. He's Czech. And so looking, doing some further research into that, it is pronounced Mucha. 
Mucha. Mucha, yeah. Alphonse Mucha. Alphonse Mucha. And so it's all that Art Nouveau trippy ladies that are all painted up in flowy linen and, yep. you know, filigree. All the and filigree that's like got hard 90 degree angles and then like smooth t- like totally. transitions. To and like- that's all my house plants and it's all real because it's all real acted out art. It's just ladies standing there for weeks on end. That's a trip to just even like imagine. Yeah, what a trip. Like to imagine like that, like all those angles and things just being like in 3D in front of you. Right there. No one's done that. Yeah. It's like I want to. I, like uh, Live art. Terry Gillum, uh, like he needs to make that happen. Totally from Monty Python. Like make oh, yeah. that into a scene. Like, <laughs> I want to see scene. that in like with CGI or with 3D. Like what? It, totally, but pay no attention to it. So it's more like a background thing. Don't, don't and you're you like, the, wait, did I just see that? that? Make the art, the actual paintings themselves kind of sad. Like they're eh, not even looking nobody, over here. I'm fucking holding this cares. weird like position for three weeks. <laughs> Hello, I haven't moved in three Anybody, weeks, yeah. and no. no one said a word to me. Right? Yeah. Well, you burp at the dinner table. Ten thousand people laugh. <laughs> I'm standing here in a weird position. <laughs> can anyone just? <laughs> can someone just stop and look for a little bit? Pay me some attention. Yeah. <sighs> Your desperate paintings, <laughs> totally. Do you? Uh, what's uh, you? You talking about the kitchen a second ago, uh, grabbing food uh, that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow when she's making her uh, dirt, dirt smoothie. smoothies. Uh, what's the kitchen look like? Describe it visually. Um, it, uh, shaker style doors, all white. Shaker style everything, which is kind of like a farmhouse chic thing. Big, huge, fat molding. Um, again, I love giant molding. Like, just that's one of the giant, best things of like country design. Is just like, plain trim everywhere. Um, very craftsman-y, very country. Yeah. I, uh, our old house, we used to have the butcher block. It, wasn't, it was a lot of maintenance in that. So the countertops we have now are fairly low maintenance. They're like a gray stone. Um, you know, and they're easy, just but all white backsplash. I mean, just, just easy. Okay. Um, my kitchen is full of cornucopia, though. I love spilling out cornucopia. So I could just go <laughs> eat fruit. <laughs> And veggies, <laughs> just like legit cornucopias. That's how your groceries get delivered from Amazon uh, in a cornucopia. In cornucopias. <laughs> totally. Is this in a bag? Because I don't work with those. <laughs> right. Send it back. Right. I got some famous person, Matthew McConaughey, just yeah. filling my yeah, cornucopias. I think, I think these fucking eccentric billionaires have rubbed <laughs> off on you, and you're like, I will not look at that if it is not I, in a cornucopia. I need a, a, everything full of cornucopias. All your help is like talking to each other. They're like, <laughs> just make sure it's in a cornucopia. And like what? Like just trust me and put it in it's a cornucopia. Yeah. And a cornucopia <laughs> and cakes. I love cake. I don't know why I love like fancy cakes. What kind of cake would we be having right now in your fantasy house? If I was here with the fantasy house crew, the film crew and me. Currently, the theme of the week is like an almond, almond flowered cake. Okay, um, but it, I'll, I'll have one made to look like a cornucopia full of fruits. So you think it's real fruit, but it's a exotic cake. Dog. Right? Is this fantasy house or cake boss? Is, yeah. yeah. It's fantasy cake boss. <laughs> the house is a cake. The house is one big cake. Um, let's see. We discussed the family room. That's where all the uh, – they'll have great acoustics in the in the uh, family room. That's where all the acting and TV shows – you know, we could watch Saved by the Bell or whatever. Oh, they're yeah, just, dude. They're just in the corner. I really know. want to watch Saved by the Bell when I can go look at like one of your freaking paintings just chilling. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. Fan- like, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> – Let's sit down and watch uh, Slater do something. Let's watch. What's AC Slater up to? What's AC Slater up to right Lisa now? Turtle. <laughs> and they're all there. I mean, they're in the crowd. <gasps> when Sharon, they're crowd members. Oh, there. yeah. They're waiting to, they're to, go, waiting up to go up on I stage. I forgot that, this, that I'm not watching Saved by the Bell, the show I'm watching. You're watching the, the actor, watching... the true actors acted out in front of you. Yeah. So I digress. Uh, yes, let's – or not <laughs> digress. I'm sorry. I um, – I don't even know what the term is. I'm changing this one up. Let's watch Saved by the Bell. 3D Saved by the Bell. I'm into it. Totally. Um, Bathrooms are bathrooms. Uh, If there's any tech in my house, it'd be in my master. It'd be in my master bath. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, But that would probably be the only tech that's in there. Okay. Um, We could check out the master bedroom, which is also. Yeah, let's go there. Master bedroom. This is the only place that could have any tech or the master bathroom? The bathroom is tech. We'll start with the master bedroom. Oh, yeah, and the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Dude, and Slash is like so long behind you. Don't forget about Slash. And I'm just doing, oh, yeah. I wonder if Slash ever plays any like Kirk Hammett style. Or actually, that was Cliff Burton, right? But if he plays any, uh, wait. No, it was Kirk no, Hammett. No, that was Kirk Hammett. Yeah, Cliff yeah. Burton was the bassist. Totally. Uh, I wonder if he plays any uh, Metallica. Any, any I'm sure he it. has to. You know just what I mean? Fun. Yeah, I mean, because he wouldn't jam on any of his own shit. No. No. He would be like, I'm not wasting my stuff for jam. I'm, I'm doing Metallica. Yeah, totally. He has to just jam on other people's shit when he's fucking around. So, 
he's jamming on the actual guitar. I'm doing it with my mouth. The crowd's totally. going crazy. <laughs> master bedroom. Totally. Nick's master bedroom is about to blow my mind. It is going to blow your mind. It's fairly basic, though, and I don't have a mattress floor. It's just a simple king it's okay. raised bed. I've been about, I'm about to have a no no ma- no mattress floor rule soon. It's like a it's, <laughs> too many people too many people. I eventually have no no interdimensional or like portal doors, and then now I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna have to add that to it too. And no totally. fucking no mattress floor. Mattress <laughs> and no offense if you're a listener that was on an episode already and you had and a, mattress, had a floor. mattress floor. It was a great idea, and I I love it too. But my no. listeners deserve to be refreshed. <laughs> refreshed. So, so you have a regular hard floor with with oak like light oak wood. W- yep, white oak number one, no knots, just grain. Um, basic. It it kind of carries the same motif as the rest of the house with the marugandy yep. and rich navies and mustards. Mm-hmm. Um, rich navy. Rich, I'm listening. Uh, right. How much will mm-hmm. I sell for? <laughs> the the bed's average height. Not too tall. Not too low. So I can literally just kind of lean down onto it. Because when they're too high, you gotta hop up, and when yep. they're too low, you gotta fall. It's like yep. a perfect height to just. Bottom out, quote unquote. Bottom yep. out. No um, pun intended. No pun intended. Put your tushy right here. Totally. Um, so I love I love TV at bedtime, but my house has no tech. So uh, instead of TV, I have Huey Lewis in the news, and they <laughs> sing me a three to four song set every morning when I wake up and every evening when I go to bed, and they update me with actual news stories. <laughs> So, Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis oh, the and news. the news, yeah. So I get the news from the news. <laughs> the Dow Jones dun, dun, is down 500 points. Bum, bum, but don't worry about it because all your money is in bitcoins. Dun, dun. <laughs> totally. Dude, dude, totally. They're talking about <laughs> don't, yeah, don't Amazon's on fire. Don't let your kids in the room because you got morning wood. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and, and he does ads, too. That's how we make some side hustle money, too. You're making Huey, Huey Lewis, Lewis side yeah, hustle? He's, he's like, dude, yeah, he's doing ads. It's like, that's the power of Dove. And it's like a soap ad <laughs> for, my master, for my master bathroom. <laughs> then you go in your master bathroom and that's what's in there? Because Dove's you've been out, brainwashed dude. by Huey Lewis for years and that's all you use is <laughs> Dove? Dove, totally. He's also the guy that he's, he works for the cornucopia lobby. Yeah, totally. totally dude. Let's go into that master bathroom then. Okay, the so only the, place that you allow tech in your the house? The only place that I allow tech. So the master bath is very sterile at the same time. Still all white, white tile, white everything tile. Um, and I have a bathroom attendant. It's Joey Lawrence. And every time I take off my pants, he goes, he goes whoa. <laughs> and that's just for me. Oh, that's just dear. for me. I can have him do it for you if you want. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd prefer if Blossom was just in there, just not even saying anything. But <laughs> <laughs> Totally. She has like a biology degree, right? So she could like, you know, probably totally. me and scientifically analyze my, my, me going to the bathroom in the morning. Uh, yeah. So like, like, you have a decent stream. You're at about 85% of the stream curve. You um, know, if you stand slightly at an angle to the right. That then might, my brother will say, whoa. <laughs> totally. Whoa. <laughs> oh, so, um, I have, uh, so my, t- my toilet is ergonomic, similar to my bed. It's like a comfort height. So it's like the perfect height okay. to sit on. It's not uncomfortable in any way. Elongated bowl. Um, now, I'm huge on showering after BMs. That's like my thing. Oh yeah. So like I'm a regular dude and my whole day is it starts that way. It's like a couple cups of coffee, BM shower. And it drives me That's nuts. That's your routine. That's your morning miracle. Totally. Okay. And and if it, there's days where I have to get up earlier than other days, I strategically plan it out to have the coffee already even earlier so I have this whole hour and 20 minute your you process. Know, the total process. And it drives me nuts to be in without a shower. Like I just I feel filthy. So if you have to go have a BM somewhere else during the day or whatever else, you don't like the way you feel for the rest of the day. I don't. I'd rather just take a shower. Yeah. That's difficult. I'm not a Jewish guy that just sometimes has to go when his body says it's time to go. Yeah. So I don't have that. I'm like, like I said, I'm fairly routine and fairly regular. And that comes down to dietary, I guess. I'm just watching what I eat and making sure that it's all kind of structured and the same and I meal prep and all that. So it's always routine. So I'm never stuck. I mean, every once in a while it's like, Oh oh yeah, no, I I can't make it home. And then I, all I would think about is going home to take a shower. Yeah. People are talking to you. (laughs) They're like, you're all right. You're like staring off into space. (laughs) Just daydreaming about (laughs) getting in the shower. Just like, Oh, I need a shower so bad. (laughs) God bless you for having such a uh, good Firm totally. grasp on your bowel movements. Totally. I'm old. I'm old. My bowel movements tell me what to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> your no. years are 
I tell my bowel movements yeah. who's boss. You plan it out. It's in your <laughs> totally. eye calendar. <laughs> totally. Your phone. Everything's synced, including my synced. ass. Totally. A sphinct. <laughs> oh, I'm sphinct. I'm sphinct. Eye cal is sphinct. Um, totally. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I can't handle it without the shower. Um, so coming to the tech part, um, my shower, and this is solely because I'm lazy, is like a car wash. I just take all my clothes off, take a shit, lock my feet into the shower, <laughs> and this conveyor belt <laughs> just begins. Yeah, this conveyor belt just takes me through a whole body wash, if you will. Yeah. That's just like a car. It sprays a bunch of soap on me, then it sprays me off, then it has all these scrubbies that just like handle the whole thing, top to bottom, and it takes me through that whole shower process. Yeah. Face a wash, shampoo and conditioner, like well, you all, just stand there and just totally chill. and I just stand there and chill. And so it's super therapeutic and it's massaging because I got all these weird like foam rubber things rubbing all over you know what i mean sounds great just like a car wash and it's like a warm day in la so i'm just like i could go for one of those right now a body wash like a full-on like i don't do anything and it just gets every crevice and you're just like copyright body wash copyright body wash hashtag uh don't rip off nick don't don't do intellectual properties hashtag (laughs) the body plumber idea (laughs) the body wash Nick, nick the patent i have never seen that in someone's house for the record like like, oh, in real life. In real life, yeah. There's all kinds of crazy shit I've seen in people's bathrooms. But you've never I've seen never like seen a, a full body conveyor wash. belt style. Like it's no. gonna just. Nope. Yeah, that's badass. Yep. Uh, I think the closest that we've had on Fantasy House is uh, my buddy Adam had the Iron Man like robot that dresses you like in real time as oh, you're walking, don't, yeah, don't. which I haven't seen Iron Man, so I didn't know about it. But he explained it to me. And I was like, "That sounds pretty techy. I liked it. It was a yeah, cool yeah. idea." So you're walking, it just like dresses, it dresses you as you, you so walk like, from one room like, to the next. But this is more important than getting dressed. This is a shower. This is a shower. And showers dude. is like a sacred, yeah, it's totally sacred minute for me in the morning. It, totally, and it's uh, it's as automated as something can be in my no tech house. So it's like the only. The I only think that's tech. cool. That's like the tech limit. Yeah. You've got your this is there's a time and a place for tech, and I'm not going to waste it on anything else besides this most important event. Totally, that's it. Other because my squeaky clean friend. And honestly, that's like the only thing that's really personal and kind of to myself in that house because I'm so surrounded by everybody else, which stuff like that makes me feel good. Slash I isn't in there behind you playing guitar solos while you're going through it? No, he plays them from the outside. I could hear it. <laughs> totally. While I'm in the shower, totally. As it's scrubbing your boss? Totally. So in. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm fantasizing about it right now. Right in now? my fantasy house. Totally. As you get older, you fantasize less about sex and more about like, oh, you know it would be great right now? Uh, you know, a car wash for my body. You know? You just <laughs> totally fantasize about, you know it be great right now? Uh, not having to do dishes after I cook a meal. Totally. Like, what have the old fantasies we used to have when we were younger? Right. Now it's just like, you know it would be great right now? If my wife's student loans were paid off. That's a fantasy <laughs> I have. Like, it's like, that's a fantasy. That's a fantasy. Uh, Okay, where do we go after this one? Um, we don't really have a yard, so like if we yeah, I mean you're in the forum, right? If, yeah, we're in the forum that's in the Mall of America, which has been rebranded as MOA. Okay, um, lately, like in real life, or in real life, yeah. Oh, okay, and so like if we wanted to get out, we would have to crowd surf from the forum through the forum stands. <sighs> so we crowd surf out. And then we – there's two ways to get around the small of America. Wait. Are we going outside? Yeah, we're we're going to – well, it's, it's inside, but it's it's outside of our house. So if we go into the Mall of America to, say, ride a roller coaster or go catch a comedy show or whatever, um, we have to ride those little – You can go to the comedy show. I've been to enough of those. I'm hopping on the roller coaster. <sighs> The crowd just went crazy for me saying that. Totally. Like we're on a really bad sitcom. <laughs> totally. They so, know the cues. They know when it's time. Right? They can feel the rhythm. Totally. <sighs> so the way we get around is those little four-wheel furry animals that they have at all the malls now. You ever seen those things? No. You're tripping me out right now. What? What is this? A four-wheel furry animal? Yeah. They're like they're like lions and tigers and bears. And they have like four wheels. And they, you rent them for like two bucks. And the kids erase them around the malls. That's really? how you get around malls nowadays. I had no idea. What? Go to a mall, brother. I okay. I guess I will. <laughs> Dude, they're awesome. They're, they're awesome for adults. You're not living until you've gone to a mall. You, lately? you go to a mall. Really? Just any mall has this? I, and almost every mall I've been to, they totally have them, and you could rent them. They're a couple bucks, or seven bucks, or something. And people, so you don't have to walk around anymore. Totally. Okay. Yeah, and you just ride these animals. And then you get to mind from, blown. You get from one spot to the next. Totally, and that's how we get around. Go from the gap, yeah, 
all the way to the Mrs. Fields cookies. Totally. Without having to burn a single calorie besides... <laughs> Just a little wrist action. A little wrist action. Yeah, totally. And they're actually pretty It's got quick. a throttle? It's got a throttle, yeah. That's how it works. Dude, we're turning It's like a riding wally. a quad runner. <laughs> it's totally like riding a quad. Yeah? Yeah. I, I actually, it makes me want to go to a mall. Just totally. To we rent should, a quad We should do quick. that next. A Let's quad go. that looks like a lion. <laughs> totally. Okay, so we um, crowd surf. Now we crowd we, surf. We got out. I'm, we got out. There's full concessions. Like if you want a hot dog or whatever, you know what I mean? We can do that. Full full, full uh, concession stands, beer taps, or whatever you need out there. Okay. Um, but when we're done and we go back home, um, my backyard, I guess, is the stage at the forum. And so, uh, again, with the no tech, I don't have a radio. So I just have live bands that play on stage. And... Um, you could request songs, like, but you have to like physically create a playlist, like like you're requesting a karaoke song, and just hand them a with piece a of paper. Write down a piece of paper. You write down your playlist. I'm okay with that? Totally. And um, <laughs> I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of. You have like, to write down skip, like if you're halfway through the song, you write the arrow down and you write skip, like skip. <laughs> you pass that along to the band, and they just immediately skip to the next. Skip song. to the next song, totally. But I love. I'm a huge fan of like uh, mashup cover bands. So, like, while you're here, there's, like, Bob Dylan playing with the Wu-Tang. They go by Boo Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Boo Dang. Boo Dang. <laughs> Boo, Boo Dang. Totally. The Boo Dang clan. Dude, I love that. It makes, I'm drawing the Wu-Tang logo right now. Right? <laughs> Boo Dang. Boo Dang. Cash was everything around me. Cream. Get the money. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> totally, dude. And he, uh, I take it off the, the barbecue, whatever it is, and I stick it up your ass, slow like. I'll keep, I'll keep feeding you and feeding you. <laughs> totally. That Wouldn't cream? that be great? Is that the beginning of Cream? It's totally, yeah. Uh, with Method it's Man like, yeah, threatening it's a, how he's going to torture you. how he's going to torture you. Torture, you motherfucker. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So this is Bob Dylan, current Bob Dylan. So he's like in, well into his 70s. Oh, so he's like bitter and just insane? Totally. You know, ever notice how Bob Dylan like buttons his last button up on his shirt like he's like a 20-year-old like in a Target commercial? <laughs> totally. I'm like, wait, why, why are you buttoning up what? the very top? How serious are you? And he's, he's wearing like those super straw hats and you're like, totally. you're really tripping me out, Bobby. Like, yeah. have, you done any, have you ever done any plumbing at his house? Um, no. Okay. Nope. Because he probably has some weird stuff. I, I Bob have Dylan. to assume. I imagine Bob Dylan has the weirdest stuff in his house. I'm sure. That <laughs> Been murdering be hookers every night. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure he has ungodly amounts of money. He's right? probably one of those weird famous yeah, people. Yeah, like, oh, he's just, like, it's too much money. You lose your mind. Even if you start off like, you know, he had yeah. the, this guitar kills fascists. Totally. But now he's just like, you know. God only knows. Who knows? I wish I had a better punch there. for that, huh? <laughs> right. he, he started off with a guitar. His guitar, guitar kills <laughs> But then now he's... Well, 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 think of an ending to that yourself, folks. <laughs> Be creative. This, this podcast is about using your imagination. <laughs> I can't do everything for I you, people. <laughs> you need to have an internal riff dialogue going on anyways. It's for your own health. Gosh darn it. <laughs> feel like I'm raising a whole generation over here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm just joking, folks. Thanks for listening. I love you guys. Totally. All right. What else we got? Are there other rooms here? Um, I, I, there. I have a guest. I, I have a guest suite. Let's go for there. Guests. Let's go to. The, let's wrap it up with a guest suite. Fantasy guest suite. Fantasy guest suite. Yes. Show me this guest. Suite. Um, it's actually the green room of the forum, and it's nothing but plush couches that are big enough to double as sleepers, and anything you want is in there. So. You let's pretend you're sending in your rider. What mm-hmm. would be on? What would be on your backstage rider? Like anything, 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 anything. It's the fantasy guest suite. I mean, it could be anything you want as the guest. Anything that I want. Yeah, twenty five pound gummy bear. I mean, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> what a peculiar real doll this celebrity wants. A twenty five pound gummy bear. bear. Well, it takes all kind. Just it order it for him. Just Better order. than that cornucopia guy. Uh, they're like, that's the owner. Shut up. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I would probably, if I had a rider, depending on if I was hungry or not, I would want a, um, I would want a virtual reality um, cockpit so that I could safely Ooh. and quickly swap between Formula One race cars and maybe like those Red Bull, like those 
jets that they not the jets the uh, propeller planes that they do the stunts in oh, the, where they're like really maneuverable and they like oh, they yeah, fly yeah. through those loops and it's like playing Mario Brothers but in real in real life. For a second, I thought you were going to say the what do they call it the flu tog where they like they, oh, they, they assemble all the stuff on the bikes and they the ride them. Tog is when they just in case our listeners don't know the flu tog is <laughs> is one of those uh, it's like the drunkenest of all the Red Bull competitions. It's like, the worst. If you if have no skills dude. but you have the balls to drop off of a pier, yes. that's what flu tog is. <laughs> they like duct tape cardboard wings to bikes. Yes. I thought that you I've were gone gonna, to that in person. I it would be awesome if your virtual reality it was, was a flu talk. Ducks. Yeah, and instead of like <laughs> picking your jet or your car, you get to pick the cra- like the big the rubber ridiculous duck. invention. Like totally. it's basically like Burning totally. Man jumping off of something. <laughs> it's so totally. silly. Uh, no, but I was thinking like those jets that Red Bull has, where they uh, they they fly like they're like very maneuverable like stunt jets. Oh yeah, and yeah, they've yeah. had some races and stuff like that that where are they really spiral cool. and stuff. Oh yeah, really oh, yeah. cool. And like I don't know if I'll ever have the balls or uh, yeah, mostly the balls or the finances. To go and do one of those, you might have to be trained for years to ever do anything like that. So it's not something yeah. you can just jump into. Like, hey, can I rent one of your stunt jets? <laughs> They'll be like, uh, like, what are your credentials? I don't know. I, don't, I think it'd cool. be fun. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, like I don't want to put in like ten years or even five years or even a year. Even th- yeah. I don't want two fucking classes. <laughs> yeah. To learn how to fly one of those, but if I could just sit in a virtual reality cockpit in the green room and, and do that real quick, totally right while sipping on a, 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 a mint a chocolate chip milkshake. Oh yeah. And maybe having a tres leches cake and Ooh, yeah. you know what I mean, like. Yeah. Maybe an apple fritter. Perfect. And then... Uh, Can they be in a cornucopia? For you, I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. If you're going to sit there and watch me eat it out of the cornucopia yes. and be like, that's totally. how you eat it. That's, that's my boy it. right there. Right like, you know cornucopia. what? It gives me a little pleasure to give you a little pleasure. <laughs> in my non-sexual Sweet. love-making way, of like, if that's totally. going to get you off, yes. I'll do that. We can, we can do that. <sighs> and then I probably... Um, I'd probably have scallops. Uh, scallop nigiri sushi from, uh, from Sugarfish. All right. I'd have... Toro, uh, seared Toro from Sugarfish. Oh, no, Sugarfish. I don't know if they sear it. Um, seared Toro from a few places. I don't even know where. I would just be like, this is the green room at the Forum in Nick's Fantasy House. Yeah. Blow my mind with some great Toro. I'm Fantasy sure they'll do it. Me, totally. Right? Yeah. And a little bit of salmon. Definitely mm. some salmon from Sugarfish, my favorite uh, salmon. Awesome. And some yellowtail from Sugarfish. Mm. Also my favorite. <laughs> I'm just going to Sugarfish mm. uh, for all this stuff. And uh, I think that would probably make me happy as uh, al- al- along the lines of you know the virtual reality cockpit and having that. And what am I doing? I've just hijacked your fantasy show because you gave me the opportunity totally. to, get, to get wild with it, right? Totally. Yeah, that's okay. why, that's why I asked. What are you doing in there? Um, I'm going to keep it simple. I kept it simple. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I wasn't sitting in a back massager chair, you know, like nothing was, you know, <laughs> I wasn't having my toenails clipped by a robot. I mean, I was just, you know, eating sushi, flying a, a jet, a fake VR jet. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, oh, along the lines of the VR thing, I'd like, I'd like, um, like adult arcades that have, like the cool ride on games, like you really get on a, the motorcycle and you move around, yeah. And like, um, but no consequences for being drunk. Totally, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what video games are great for. You can be drunk and you can drive this thing. Totally. Really? Right. A all combo sh- I crave that can never really do. <laughs> totally. Um, all the shoot 'em up games are always fun. Um, where you like ride on the backs of jeeps and like shoot. Dino- What's that Jurassic? Oh Park? yeah, like the and dino shoot- hunting. Totally. Yeah, I think people would like that. Um, I don't know. Six limes in a case of Corona. Oh, dude! Sounds like this is going to be the weirdest, longest Corona commercial. Totally. Right. Instead of at a beach, like it's yeah. those, like it's, it's just a, it's it's my fantasy guest suite. It's literally <laughs> been like it's been an hour of that, and then it just shows the hand come over and grab the Corona with the lime in it. And totally. Then it has the Corona logo. The Corona logo. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, dude. Um, are you yeah. gonna have any food in in your green room? What are you gonna eat? More more cake, dude. Cornucopia cake. That's more corn- corn- cornucopia. Cake. Did you just invent cornucopia cake? I think I did. I think you could open one of those in Denver and just have cornucopia. The cornuc uh, just like don't quit your job to open it, but like if you can hire someone at scale, hustle, yeah, side hire hustle. someone that is down to manage it. Yeah, Huey, Huey, Huey can do it. There Another side hustle for Huey. Subcontract. Yeah, I'm sure office. Huey Lewis <laughs> would love to run a cake shop. <laughs> Cornucopia cake. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you're a brilliant man, but as an entrepreneur, I'm just not That's sure you're bad. hiring properly. <laughs> I want to sit in a cockpit right now and fly one of those planes <laughs> fly and drive, one a, drive VR? a Formula One. Yeah, dude. Totally. It's just you're like, what do you want in the green room? I was like, oh, I couldn't. And then you're like, no, what do you want? I was like, Damn all right, man. so I want scallop sushi, scallop uh, VR, sushi. everything, and. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, dude. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Oh, dude. I'm so stoked. This is such a blast. If you guys need any, if you guys need any plumbing. If, if they want to, if they want some positive vibes and just right? want to kick it. Yeah. I mean, if anyone wants to come hang out in Denver, I'm game. Dude. You come hang out on the farm and play with my chickens. I got lots of chickens. I love that you, that, like that you're so happy there and that the company's great. And it oh, just yeah. makes me like, there's so, always so much negative news about, uh, you know, the middle class, economics, all the stuff going on. And so when you hear like, this is a company that is kicking ass, they're doing a great service, totally. you're making a good living, yep. the people out uh, that they're like letting you enjoy your time with your family. And lo- I mean, it's like, it's just, it's, it's so nice to hear like that kind of good news and that positive stuff. But what could you expect any less from Nick? Totally. <laughs> right. Right. Positivity. It's like you're, you're, I think you're an example of like, if you're, uh, uh, if you have that shining lightness to you, like the stuff comes into your life too, right? Like you, totally. you probably attract that stuff and it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I'm very happy for your, your happiness and your good spot in life, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Th- definitely blessed with good karma. Thanks for taking time out of your life to come out here and do this. It's so, oh, so dude. special. Dude, I'm so excited that you let me do this. Are you kidding That's me, awesome. dude? I was so excited. Yeah. This has been like, I've been looking forward to this. It's been my calendar. I've been awesome. like, dude, this means the world to me. It's so cool. Yeah. Listening to, you know, Fantasy House, like the second I heard the first one, I was like, oh, I know exactly what mine would be. And then I, it was just in my head. And then I was like, you know what? I'm totally going to ask John if I can be on there. Dude, it's, I'm, I'm so glad you did. Yeah, it's so rad. It's so, it's so rad having you on this. And, I, and I'm glad that it, it inspired you because that's what I want this show to do. I want... Uh, I want people to like feel like as adults, like you can still be creative. Oh, totally. And it doesn't matter what job you have. You know, you'd be like, yep. I'm a lawyer. I should have been a guitar player. And it's like, whatever, <laughs> dude. You can still Pick like up you a can guitar. do this in your free time. You could be totally. driving to work in the morning, or you could be at lunch right now, yeah. listening to Fantasy House and being like, Hey, like, what would I have in my fantasy? Or you can get to know people in your circle too. Totally. So you can ask your brother or your sister or your you can ask your parent like, what would be in your fantasy house? And and you get to know them more. Yeah. One person's gonna like you, I get to know you more when you say like there's no tech in my house like oh you want to break from tech totally but, oh there's applause is going on like oh you want like you want you want to feel that that, that that excitement of like of crushing it like totally uh, like, all day long it, you get to know people ask your spouse sit down with your husband your wife like ask your kid like what's in your fantasy house and explain to them if they're like what are you fucking talking about my fantasy house explain them what you mean obviously. yeah Don't totally just, you know yeah. have some like, wait, smooth what? segues what <laughs> ask them to subscribe send them a link for god's sake do it but yeah like i think it's just a great thing for adults to do that and it makes me happy that you got that feeling when you listen to it because it makes me feel again like of some form of service to society which makes me happy oh totally so it was it's so positive like in that line of thinking that thought process of in your own head creating what you, what you you think your fantasy would be cuz um it truly would it leads you to start doing things that you're like oh man this is something i could totally do in reality and then you're like inspired to really do stuff oh, dude you know i love that like like even though like you probably don't have the funds or the technology to have a shower that can like wash you without you having to do anything right yeah but then, like you, you it, it can influence other decisions. Even just be like, I like it all white in my house. It's like, well, that's totally doable. Like totally. because it makes color you pop. C- it's like that one yeah. thing right there could help you decide to make your house that much more. Totally, and you, then you turn your fantasy into reality, and it can totally be done. Like, I mean, obviously, like if, if you, you want billion dollar robots that do everything for you, that yeah, might I mean, be a bad that might be a bad actually too. <laughs> totally, there's a lot of maintenance and those things. By but, the way. it's not just the one payment, <laughs> right? But there's a lot of things that a lot of people dream about that they just never bring to fruition. They just never go out and do it. They don't strive to do that. They're just like, ah, oh, I could never do that. Well, you get caught and up in patterns, though. You do you without even realizing, like, oh, you're not using your imagination. Oh shit, I forgot. It's been twelve years. And every, I've been focused on paying my bills or totally. doing what other people are telling me oh, yeah. from their imagination. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I love it, imagination. I love fantasy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I, I don't think it should ever have to go away until yep. you hit the grave. I think totally. you just have it your whole life. You Cradle just, to the grave. It's, it's, just easy, it's easier to forget sometimes because we get carried away. Yeah. yeah. I myself just get bit busy. And, you can get busy and wrapped up. But, but yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, that's one thing that I love with my kids, man, is that the little creative minds. You know, and I love just being creative with them. Isn't it great? Totally. It, it totally. brings one of the best feelings in it the world. Brings so much joy. Isn't it one of the best? Like it totally it brings so much joy just seeing. Oh, totally. S- witnessing. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. Like, is that what God is? Just like a witness to everything? Because right? it's like because there is so yeah. much. And not to get overly spiritual, and I don't yeah. want to press my uh, beliefs or feelings on anybody. Yeah. But like, there is just so much joy in witnessing. Yeah. Once it, and I never knew this before having kids, and no one ever explained it to me in a word that I could understand. But like, as soon as I had them, I feel like you just hit the nail on the head. Totally. As soon as I had them, 
other stuff became like less like my perspective changed totally because I was like it just becomes about like just like seeing them smile for the first time or something seeing them get something seeing yeah. them understand something dude the the pleasure in that is like it's like a rocket ship taken it, totally. off totally yeah, it's so. Just even think about it gives me joy. Right, it's crazy. Yeah, you get like the goosebumps and stuff. Yeah, and it's cool. And then you get to you get to be a kid again. You really do. Yeah, you know. And then oh, you, like live through them totally. Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm eight again. Like this is awesome. Like making faces at the kids, and then they laugh, and then you start laughing. You're like, it's just silliness, and it's totally the best thing ever. Yeah, totally. Well, uh, this has been freaking phenomenal. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey with me and and Nick and uh, it. Seriously, thanks for coming out. Dude, awesome. No problem. All right, you guys. Have a great uh, week. Hashtag blessed guest. Truly. Mm. Peace.